Apple may have just leaked something absolutely massive, something that could change the way we think about MacBooks forever. We're talking about the upcoming M5 series MacBooks, not just faster machines, not just another chip refresh, but laptops with built-in 5G cellular support. That means no more scrambling for Wi-Fi, no more juggling unreliable hotspots, and no more being tied down to your phone's tethering. Imagine opening your MacBook anywhere, a car, a train, a park, or even a remote cabin, and instantly being connected to fast, reliable 5G.Now. I know what you're probably thinking, wait, didn't we already hear rumors that Apple might skip the M5 MacBooks altogether? Well, that's what a lot of people believed, including me at one point, but Apple's recent leaks, combined with some very specific clues and macOS updates, pretty much confirmed that M5 MacBooks are coming, and they're coming with 5G built in. So in this video, I'm going to break down everything why Apple is finally bringing cellular to the Mac what this new C1 5G modem means for performance and cost, the real-world advantages of 5G over tethering, other big M5 upgrades you need to know about like 2.5D, chip packaging and Apple's first fully in-house wireless ecosystem, and most importantly how this changes Apple's entire strategy going forward. Why Apple waited so long for 5G on Macs for years people have wondered if iPads can have LTE and 5G, why not MacBooks? Competitors like Microsoft and Lenovo have experimented with cellular laptops, so why has Apple stayed away? The simple answer, Apple never wanted to rely on Qualcomm or any other third-party supplier for such a key feature. Apple's strategy has always been about vertical integration controlling as much of the hardware and software stack as possible. That's why they built their own M-series chips for Macs and why they've been trying for years to develop an in-house cellular modem. The delay? Apple's custom modem project was notoriously tricky faced multiple setbacks and Qualcomm kept extending its supply deals with Apple. But now Apple has finally cracked it with the C1 modem which made its debut in the iPhone 16e earlier this year. And this isn't just about cutting costs. By owning the modem technology Apple can optimize it for performance power efficiency and deep integration with macOS something Qualcomm could never fully deliver. And now that the C1 modem is ready, Apple can roll it out to the M5 MacBooks, iPads, and beyond. The leak that confirmed it here's where things get really interesting. Felipe Esposito from Macworld uncovered hidden code references pointing to two major things an upcoming M5 Pro MacBook Pro. References to a new chip codenamed Centauri. That Centauri chip? It's Apple's C1 modem with full 5G support. This is a big deal because it means Apple isn't just refreshing the MacBooks with an M5 chip. They're pairing it with their in-house modem for the first time ever. That's not just a minor spec bump, that's a fundamental new feature that changes how you'll use a MacBook. Think about it, Apple skipped 5G on Macs for years because they didn't have a modem they controlled. Now they do. And because they don't have to pay Qualcomm licensing fees anymore, this move not only improves the product but also boosts Apple's margins. Apple gets to market it as a premium upgrade while also saving money on the back end. Classic Apple. Why built-in 5G matters, some people might say, okay, but I can already tether my iPhone to my Mac. Why should I care about built-in 5G? Well, let me tell you from personal experience, tethering is not the same. The speeds you get when tethering are often six to 10 times slower than using 5G directly on your phone. Upload speeds especially take a massive hit, sometimes dropping to unusable levels. That means uploading a YouTube video, syncing files to iCloud, or even just hopping on a Zoom call can become frustratingly unreliable. And then there's the hassle. Every time you want to use your MacBook on. Online, you've got to pull out your iPhone, enable the hotspot, wait for it to connect, and watch your phone's battery drain like crazy. Built-in 5G solves all of that. The MacBook would just connect instantly every time no setup required. And here's the kicker. MacBooks have much larger, more powerful antennas than iPhones. That means reception will almost certainly be stronger on a MacBook than on your phone. Imagine being in a remote area where your iPhone barely holds one bar of service, but your MacBook pulls in a solid, stable connection. That's going to be a huge win for people who work on the Go.MacOS Tahoe and vehicle motion cues. Now, here's the clue that most people missed. When Apple previewed macOS 26 Tahoe, they introduced a feature called Vehicle Motion Cues. This is a system that detects when you're in a moving vehicle and overlays subtle visual cues on your display to reduce motion sickness. This feature has existed on iPhones for a while, but Apple just brought it to Macs. And you have to ask why? 
Why would Apple prioritize motion sickness reduction for laptops unless they were planning for people to use Macs in cars, trains, buses, or planes? Combine that with built-in 5G and it suddenly makes perfect sense. Apple is laying the groundwork for MacBooks that are designed to be used anywhere, not just at your desk or coffee shop. Apple's marketing strategy here is where it all comes together. When Apple markets the M5 MacBooks, they don't need to hype up the chip performance too much. The M4 MacBooks are already insanely fast and the average user doesn't need another 20% speed boost. But 5G connectivity? That's a story Apple can tell. Expect glossy ads of people editing videos from the beach joining FaceTime calls in moving cars or streaming high residential content from the middle of nowhere. Apple will position the M5 MacBooks as the ultimate freedom laptops unchained from Wi-Fi ready to work anywhere life takes you. And the industry will follow just like Apple made high. Refresh displays notch cutouts and MagSafe popular again, other laptop makers will rush to copy this move. The hardware upgrades, now let's talk about the chip itself because Apple isn't stopping at just adding 5G. The M5 Pro and M5 Max are rumored to be the first chips to use TSMC's 2.5D packaging technology. What does that mean? Instead of building everything into a single monolithic chip, Apple can stack and connect different chiplets like separate CPU and GPU modules using high-speed interconnects. This has several big advantages, better yields, fewer defective chips, which lowers costs. Better thermals heat can be managed more efficiently across multiple dyes. More flexibility, Apple could mix and match CPU and GPU combinations, potentially letting you configure a MacBook with, say, a beefy GPU, but a lighter CPU setup if that's what your workload demands. This is a massive shift in Apple's silicon strategy, and the M5 could be the start of a whole new era in Mac chip design. Apple's wireless. Ecosystem, another piece of the puzzle Apple, is also rolling out its own Wi-Fi and Bluetooth chips. That means with the M5 MacBooks, Apple could have full control over all three major wireless technologies, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, 5G, cellular, no more Broadcom, no more Qualcomm, just Apple. This is huge because it means better efficiency, tighter security, exclusive features that only Apple devices can use when connected together. Imagine airdrop handoff or continuity becoming even faster and more seamless. That's the kind of ecosystem lock in Apple thrives on. How it stacks against the competition. Yes, other manufacturers have tried cellular laptops before. Microsoft's Surface Pro X and a handful of Lenovo ThinkPads offered LTE and 5G options. But they never really caught on because Windows laptops struggled with battery life performance trade-offs and inconsistent modem integration. Apple is different. With the M-Series chips, Apple already dominates in efficiency and battery life. Adding 5G on top of that, without compromising performance, could make MacBooks stand out as the first truly mainstream cellular laptops that actually deliver on the promise. The bigger picture Apple strategy zooming out this move says a lot about where Apple is heading. By building its own chips for CPU, GPU, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, and now 5G, Apple is becoming completely self-reliant on silicon. That's unprecedented in the PC industry. And it's not just about Macs. The same C1 modem will likely appear in future iPads and maybe even new product categories down the line. Apple could even experiment with subscription bundles. Imagine your Apple One plan, including a built-in 5G data package for your MacBook. So here's the bottom line. The M5 MacBooks with 5G aren't just another yearly refresh. They represent a major leap forward in how we'll use Macs in the future. With built-in 5G new chip technology and Apple's complete control over wireless connectivity, these laptops could easily become the most versatile and future-proof devices Apple has ever made. And if Mark Gurman's timeline holds true, we could see them as early as next year. What do you guys think? Would you actually pay extra for a MacBook with built-in 5G? Or do you think tethering is good enough? Drop your thoughts in the comments, I'd love to hear what you think. And of course, don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe, and ring the bell so you don't miss my hands-on test when these laptops drop. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.